Well, hello guys, and welcome back to a finite plane review. Wait. Infinity train review. And in this episode, we're taking a look at season one, episode three, the cat's car and the unfinished car. So if, you, if you've never heard me talk about this before, I, I'm a firm believer in this idea that you can have a good show, right? There are tons of good shows out there. But if you want a truly great show, every, you need an episode. And it's different for everybody. I don't think there is one universal great episode. But you need an episode. When, when you love a show, there has to be an episode that, like, convinces you that, no, this show is worth something greater. That there is something here to love. Previous examples would be, um, for me personally, Giant Woman and Steven and Muberty and Star. Those are just two personal examples. Like I said, it's different for everybody. And the Cat's Car is my, my uh, version of this for Infinity Train. This is the episode that hooked me and changed my opinion from thinking that, yeah, no, this is a good show to being this is a great show. I loved this episode. I, I thought this was great. The unfinished car is okay. It it's it's okay. But yeah, the cat's car is pretty freaking good. I, I really enjoyed it. And you know, I use this thing, but I never I've never given it a name. Have I well, did I call it the golden episode? I might have called it the golden No, that's not right. I uh, no, I, I don't... Have I used that? I don't know. It's this phenomenon that I've noticed, but I've never actually, like, given it a name. I'll have to figure that out at some point. But yeah, so... Let's just get right into it. So, the cat's car starts off with them finishing up a previous adventure with, like, a dinosaur baseball team. And they're like, we'll never forget you. They immediately forget. Ha ha ha, very funny, it's a version of expectations. But they're they're moving on to the next car when all of a sudden like the bridge falls apart and then a new car flies above and lands down. So basically the the train's layout can change at any moment. So it could have even theoretically moved while they were inside of a car. Of course, by the end of the episode, we learn that there's something greater going on here and that this is most likely sabotage from somebody else, which we'll talk about. But so they enter this new car and it's like a study, a library filled with all sorts of like collectibles and knickknacks. It's a very it's a it's it's an OK design. There's a lot of neat background stuff, but eh. and then the cat shows up. Which I'm glad that they brought the cat back, right? Reoccurring villains are nice. I hadn't, I hadn't even put together that, uh, un well, until here, that you have the, right, the cat is the villain, and then on the hero side, you have a dog. <laughs> That's, uh, again, it's kind of, it's kind of, it's very simple, but it's kind of clever, and I like that. But, uh, Tulip wants to leave, because they're in the cat's home, because, yeah, and yeah, I get it, because I don't trust the cat, and she has good reasons not to trust the cat. Even though, part of me, we'll, we'll get to that at the end of the episode. But the cat knocks, knocks over some stuff, and Tulip picks it up and finds a tape, like a VHS, with her name on it. And the cat says, oh, everyone has one, and it means something special. So they go to watch the tape, and the uh, Atticus is like, no, don't trust it, I don't trust the cat. And she gets sucked into the tape. Which, it's at first, it's like this white space with the static screen. I love the use of... There's a lot of static in this episode, and it's used very well. The effect, it's... TV static is like, when used right, is a very effective. And this episode uses TV static, correct? But on this screen, we see all sorts of memories. She touches the screen, and she's able to go into the memories. We see them at, like, SeaWorld, and they're having a blast. There's this commercial with Atticus and one one and eh, it's it's, it's kind of cute right it's it's a cute little joke that comes back once or twice and she's living through she's reliving some of her old memories but there's clearly something wrong like she can't hear the memory and just something's going wrong here and it's very it's very apparent and then uh, so she keeps going through this and it's 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 all happy good time fun memories right 
a double decker onion ice cream cake what i've heard of some weird ice cream flavors before pickle but onion okay i mean she was eating an onion in the first episode and there and i do think of that one character who ate nothing but tomatoes what show was that was that Sakuruso? I don't remember. But yeah, she's she's very aware that something's wrong here. Something's up. And then her mother becomes the robot, which... Do we not have a name for that? Hmm. Huh. And then her father just gets a weird stretchy neck. Like, something's wrong, and she becomes very, very presently aware of it. And it's all... Right, because it's all these happy memories. But there's all this, like, dark undertone that... The sense of artificiality. The, the episode does a good job at like, oh, she's having all this fun, but there's still like, it just doesn't feel right. And then the animation kind of like twists and then it just goes all out and reveals that she starts turning too static as the memories are like, because the memories are all wrong and all that. And then she cuts, we cut back to the dolphin world. And it's not, and she's like, no, this isn't right. And the scene shifts and the color, another clever thing is the color palette's originally like all bright, but then when she realizes the truth, it turns muted. Simple, but effective. These are, this is animation 101 people, but it's animation 101 because it works. And damn, do these scenes work. Because it goes from this happy memory of her and the dolphins and the dolphins make a pyramid. And now it's just this gray mesh and the dolphins suck and her parents are fighting about her needing glasses. It's real. It's real. It hits hard. And I love it. Because that's, that's the thing about memory. And now, I know I am admittedly a little biased towards this episode. Because I things like memory and whatnot do haunt my nightmares. And like, what's real? Do we even know what's real? Is the observable universe really real, right? Can we trust the chemical imbalance of our brain? Will you fight or will you perish like a dog? But yeah, we, we cut to our next memory and it's the couch one. But her her parents are fighting. The father's sleeping on the couch. It's It's a touching moment. But it's you you can tell what's going on and she's aware and everyone's aware and oh it it's it's super effective, man. It's the little things that just make this episode work. And then she goes to the next scene, right? Rule rule of freeze. There's three main scenes we're focusing on. And it goes from her being the president of the universe, or whatever the joke was, to it it the real event was her parents' divorce. But instead of being the actual divorce, at first, it flips from super happy to super negative, where it's her parents yelling at her and the world's on fire and all this shit, right? It goes from one extreme to the other, showing that this isn't as simple and a very positive memory that she's faking and forcing can f easily flip the opposite way and become a very negative memory when you remember it. And she does talk about the real hardships of it because it eventually tones down and it becomes closer to what happens, but there's still like the sense of what's wrong. She's still covered in static because this scene, everything amps up to 11. But as the fire dies down, as she starts to lose static, you've seen present Tulip being angry about the divorce and all that and being scared and frightened, but she's expressing it through her anger while this is that's past tulip while present tulip is self-aware she's had this insight time has passed she's grown as a person and she's able to look back on it and remember how she was feeling and how complicated everything actually is just in the span of what is this this is episode five we've seen how much tulip has grown because we saw this angry tulip in the first episode and just in it's been a few weeks probably since she's been on the train. We see how much she's grown. This, that's, oh my God, this entire divorce scene is so effective. Oh, I love it so much. But she eventually realizes the truth. She's uncovered in static and she's able to escape from the VHS memory tape. And the cat was tricking her to try to get her to stick in the memory, but it didn't work. And somehow she was able to escape 
And the cat basically tells her what I suspected at the last of the episode, the last, the end of the last episode, that the number goes down when she grows as a person or when the train thinks she's doing well. That's what the cat says. But Tulip says it doesn't matter. No more numbers. She doesn't care what the number says. And yeah, really, really effective scene. And they end up running off. Even one one yells at the cat. It's it's gr it's great. It it hits hard because again the numbers the whole mystery is this number, but now they're throwing the number out the window and it's com and it's not like and it's not like oh they're hiding something from the number about us. They explain what the number is and then say the number doesn't matter. It's set it's set up really well. It's given us our full explanation, and then pushing it to the wayside to focus on something else. It works really well. But then the car gets lifted up and the mask figure shows up. Also, the cat takes one of the tapes, but the tray, the, I don't even, you, what, what would it be called? It's not the, what do I want? I want to call, not the conductor. I do think that the we see this red line with a squiggle on it, right? As it like talks, but we don't hear it talk. My guess is that's the conductor that doesn't feel right. But that's like my guess right now is that this weird thing is the conductor. But this robot would be, well, it told Tulip to go back to her seat in the Corgi car. So is it like a ticket taker? Is that what the robot's supposed to be? But the cat says that Tulip got away and she she's taken the ball. So the let's call it the ticket taker. I like that is looking for one one i i still th i still think again i haven't seen anything contradictory towards it and the next episode is just going to prove me more right it's gonna le lead lead it's gonna lend more credits to what i think but yeah and that's where the episode ends the the ticket taker destroys all of tulip's stuff i hope we do get an actual name for it because while i think my name's clever it's actually not that good and it probably does have an official name but yeah, that's the end of the episode. Again, I think this is a great episode. This is the episode that won me over from thinking this was a good show to a great show. The way they handle all the memories and stuff. Even, I didn't even mention how she admits that it's not the tape doing it, but it's herself doing it. That's also, because I do think it's like more of a mixture of both. But you do, humans do artificially mess with their own memories. Every time you remember something, you're just remembering a memory. So every time, it's like uh, that telephone game where every time you go a layer deeper, you're misremembering something just a little more. Yeah, great episode. Great episode. Next, we have the unfinished car, which is, it's, it's, it's okay. I mean, I like it, but it's not anything like fantastic or anything. Yeah. But it starts off, they're getting out of the spa car, right? They've just finished up with the spa car. And they move on to this next car, but it's like this weird town and like right away, just from like the visuals, you can tell it isn't right. There's like floating things. There's this weird like purple. Well, we learn it's like a jam spill, but it looks like a lake just from looking at it. And everything's weird. Like there's houses without walls, stairs that are upside down and gravity is locked to the stairs, which is weird. It's it's like a broken uh, what is it it's like a broken gmod level or source feed not source is it source feed i don't know i don't know but it, it kind of well it reminds me of a broken gmod level but one one is like tweaking out realizing that no something's wrong here all these weird lights and whatnot eventually they're greeted by the inhabitants of this realm um aloysius the turtle king which yeah it's a lot of this car is kind of like revisiting so it's kind of like a ripoff of the corgi land but i actually do think it works because well yes the train car is broken as we see in a scene here in uh has we see in a scene here in a minute with like mail delivery and like hanging clothes and all that even though these turtle people like the car's broken the turtle people have taken full advantage of the broken car they use a jam spill to get around faster it's all like Little things that, well, yes, it's broken. People are taking full advantage of it, and it's it's kind of clever. 
There are a lot of like little like neat things in this car where it's just like, yeah, you could totally have like a fixed version of this, but the broken version of it, wow, flawed. And I mean, one one even points this out later that if they knew it was broken, they'd want to fix it. But it's all just really nice stuff. But they find they find the door very easily. Uh, Aloysius taken takes them to the college of because it's a gravity turtle college car and he takes them to there and there's the door out. There's also this weird thing next to the door. And so Atticus wants to stay and he does the cute dog face to get him in. Oh, and yeah, so they're staying in the car and Tulip's going to help one one as he's trying to like fix the car because it's broken. So he's like b building up walls, has Tulip clean up the jam spill and whatnot. But then Tulip decides she's had enough and she wants to leave, but nobody else does. Then we find out the whole thing about how, oh, the people actually like take advantage of the stuff and her trying to fix it is actually breaking it for them because they've evolved to, or no, no, I'm looking for the word adapted to like live in this car environment with all like the weird broken stuff. And now that they've like cleaned up the jam spill, bricked up the house and covered up the mail hole, which if you dump down the mail hole, would it just exit you out of the car? Cause it looked like it was just an exit out. I don't know, but the car is clearly, but the car is broken, but the people are fine with it. They don't realize it's broken, but one once going crazy trying to fix it and starts like destroying gravity and destroying the skybox and everything tulip goes up to stop him and this little like it reminds me of like mario galaxy with all like the shifting gravity and whatnot it's it's a neat little thing just, just her like jumping from wall to wall trying to fix it but then she confronts one one and one one's like i'm helping i caused this i i'm the reason why this car is broken which I, Tulip says that, oh no, she sh one one shouldn't be taking like uh, responsibility for this. One one didn't cause the car to break. He shouldn't have to own up to it. Part of me wonders though, if one one is actually like, one one's clearly smart enough to like fix the car. And like I said, I have that link with the ticket taker that I totally think is a real thing. And one one might be like a code source for the cars. Part of me wonders if, like, no, one one is actually right, and when designing this car, maybe one one broke or something. And they're like, I know they're trying to say that no, one one's just the sad one is blaming themselves, and they don't need to blame themselves. And she talks about the whole thing and relates it back to her, her parents' divorce and everything, and taking responsibility over it, and the whole thing from the last episode about how oh you didn't cause. The divorce and everything's still gonna be okay and tulip knows but she's also angry right it's all it all links back together there's a nice woven through line through everything that works really well but part of me wonders if like there is a sense of literality to it i just made up literality didn't i but yeah, eventually one one looks at the carnage that in order to try to fix everything because these people have adapted to it, he's actually like destroying their livelihoods. So one one steps down and admits that no, they're wrong. Okay, yeah, it's it's a nice good ending. And then I'm not going to say they ruin it per se, but I'm kind of mixed on this because when they walk through, there's like this weird, like I said, there's a weird control panel next to the college, right next to the college, next to the door. And when one one passes by it, it basically acts as like a magnet or something. That's what I'm thinking of, like running, running a magnet against the computer and it wipes it and it wipes his memory, practically factory resetting it. Or at least that's how I'm choosing to interpret the scene as if it's like factory resetting him because he gives it because he does the Frosty the Snowman thing of re-giving his memory, of re-giving his name and saying happy birthday. Okay, he doesn't say happy birthday, but you get my point. And yeah, I don't know. I mean, like technically that's resetting all the growth he did in this episode, but... I don't know. It, it's complicated. Plus, there's the whole mystery of what one one actually is. Again, I've given my ideas on that. I think it's something to do with that ticket taker. I'm trying to decide if I like that name. And yeah, that's where the episode ends. Like I said, it's okay. There's some like the broken architecture is kind of fun in some ways. The ending, like the way she talks her way out of the thing after doing like the little parkour Mario Galaxy climbing segments kind of neat. And a lot of this goes up to the world design and like 
the little aspects of world building, like the whole jam to get across and without the jam, the turtles are super slow. It's all, it's all really neat stuff. And yeah, I, th I think it's a fine episode. Nothing outstanding or anything, but yeah. Cat's car is still great. And yeah, only two episodes next. I know one of them is the ball pit car, which every time ball pits happen in media, it's always something bad. So I'm worried. <laughs> But yeah, that's that's where yeah, with two episodes left. Well, with all that, I hope you all enjoyed. Stay tuned for more. Until next time, peace.